This is the first in the series of videos covering the third lecture of the Computer Fundamentals topic of the IES Information Technology course. In this video we will be focusing on some basic definitions, motherboards and expansion cards. So what do computers do? Well, first of all they need some form of input, whether it be from a keyboard or mouse, hard disk, an optical disk, a USB device or something else computers require input. When the computer has got the data from the input system, it then immediately stores it in memory until it needs it. The most fundamental aspect of a computer is what it does with the data, and that is process it accurately and at incredible speed. However, most people are surprised to know that at its core, a computer really only performs basic arithmetic and simple logical operations. But it is the way these processes are combined and the speed with which they are performed that makes computers so helpful in our society. Finally, the data is processed into information that humans can again understand and it is presented as output, say to a monitor, a printer, or some other device. It can also be stored for later use to a storage device like a hard drive. Now, if we take away the physical parts of the computer system, we're left with the four systems that we've discussed. Input, process, memory, and output. This was John von Neumann's design presented in 1945, and it's still the fundamental design used for computers today. The textbook definition of hardware is a physical element of a computer system. That's a bit stuffy, but it's what you need to learn. Another way to think of it is something you can kick. It is physical but easily broken, so don't kick it. Hardware can look nice, it can be all shiny and have lots of pretty lights all over it, but without software, it's just that. A useless, expensive box with lights on it. So what's software? Well, the textbook definition is a non-physical element of a computer system. So therefore, it's something you can't kick. Software there are the instructions, usually known as programs that make the pretty box with lights useful. Processing is done by the hardware under the control of the software. But how do all these parts work together? Well, every computer system, whether a PC or a washing machine controller, has a motherboard or mainboard. It's a printed circuit board with various ports, slots, connections and communication circuits that, under the control of the central processing unit, also known as the CPU, it retrieves, stores and processes the data into information that we can see on monitors, information panels or printers. Now any motherboard image I show here, or any motherboard that you've seen, will look vastly different, but all motherboards have some basic similarities. They have a slot where the CPU is located. The CPU is often surrounded by heat sinks as the CPU runs at high temperatures. Now without RAM, random access memory, a computer cannot store data quickly and efficiently, therefore every motherboard will have RAM slots. Expansion slots take on many forms and the motherboard shown here has at least three distinct types. The slots identified here are generally used for optical drives and similar devices. These connections have changed dramatically over the past few years. They've become much smaller. The primary hard disk drive, HDD, needs a fast connection to the motherboard. The motherboard needs power to work, therefore it needs a spot to plug in. Now facing away from the camera are an array of ports that are accessible from the back of the computer. These might include USB ports, Ethernet ports, and even headphone and microphone ports. 
Finally, there needs to be a connection to the pretty lights on the front of the computer. These lights give an indication of the health of the hardware and the general operation of the computer. Though most motherboards come with built-in components like video, sound and network, these can be upgraded using the expansion slots on the motherboard. A more powerful video card can be useful for hardcore gamers, animators or digital image professionals. A dedicated sound card can be useful for musicians and in situations where clarity of sound is important. Finally, a wireless NIC network interface card or a wired NIC that allows for more bandwidth will enhance the computer's network capabilities. The next video will consider different input and output devices.